All right. Hello and good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all so much for joining us. My name is Salvador Munoz, and I'm the Associate Director of Public Programs and Outreach here at Poster House, which is, of course, the first and only museum in the United States dedicated to the art and history of the poster. It is my pleasure to welcome you to this afternoon's program, Genius on Display, Genius on Display with Dear Stephen. Uh, Stephen Minu, known professionally as Dear Stephen, Stephen is a South African illustrator based in Cape Town. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, uh, Stephen. <laughs> Sorry. Stephen. Sorry. <laughs> Known professionally as Dear Stephen, Stephen Mini is a South African illustrator based in Cape Town, South Africa. His characters speak from the perspective of a Black artist inspired by streetwear and the never ending consumption of fashion and hip hop culture. Influenced by artists such as Norman Rockwell and John Hassall. Minyi captures the distinct, unique characteristics of his subjects. He primarily designs for editorials, garments, and prints. And this program is, of course, presented by Poster House's CMYK Council, the museum's BIPOC advisory board that works to ensure the museum is accessible for communities of color. Before we get started, I want to share a few notes on accessibility for this event. Um, auto automated closed captioning is available for those who need it, and you can turn it on or off by clicking the CC button at the bottom of your screen. Uh, this program is being recorded and will be made available for all registered attendees after the event. Uh, and if you have any questions during the program, feel free to drop them in the chat or the Q&A box, and I will go ahead and vocalize them on your behalf. Uh, and with that, I'm going to hand it over to Stefan. <laughs> hey, everyone. Um, I hope you guys are well. I hope you're having a uh, good day thus far. Um, we're going to, well, I'm going to start the presentation with a uh, work of mine uh, that I did in the beginning. So sort of a starting um, base point of, um, yeah, illustrations are all how I basically started off with. Um, just we'll really check the uh, slide. One second. Okay. No problem. There you go. Okay. You just maybe you can just directly go to the uh, um work post. Uh, what was that? I said we can you can skip into the into the um the first or the second sorry second slide oh yes so this is this is basically where it started for me um in terms of poster and 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 character design um this this work was done for I think it was a gallery in in LA and um, the theme at the time was music and it was. That had to do with uh, 90s and, and 80s hip hop. And um, at, at the time, I wasn't, I didn't find my feet as of where I exactly belong in the industry. But um, because of the genre and my love and passion for, for hip hop and, and fashion, I started to, to illustrate a far side close to actually two. And uh, funny enough, the far side actually, the they managed to reach out to, to buy the posters and I unfortunately never got the opportunity to see them in um, in person because the printing printing house on that side immediately shipped them out to the gallery and they were they were placed on display and um, I think I saw it on the on the day of the event but once they once they were there I, I didn't see them but this is kind of a starting point in terms of if I would speak thought about my career. This is actually more or less where it started and um, more of a commentary on how I see um, the state of um, many, many things. Um, yeah, we can go to the uh, next slide. So this is part of the body of work that I started producing at that time or during that um, season. Um, it dealt a lot with uh, objects and what you deem as, as important. And I use um, the Polish Dropout um, album as, a, as an example. The original images I know is of kindly sitting alone at the, at the piano. And um, I thought oh, it would be so cool if I knew at that moment how, what Teko was in his room and, and, and what was 
uh, essentially important to him. And funny story, I don't know that any of those objects I <laughs> threw is actually in his room, but I think that's most of the things that I would essentially have in this space if I make music. <laughs> Um, so you can, as you can see, the Marvin Gaye poster at the back, um, Chicago Bulls poster, and um, these various um, album vinyls on the wall as well. That will be that will uh, be displayed basically. Um, but this is this, it's more, more me finding my feet as a well as in terms of um, getting to um, see where I, I I fit in and and where my voice would next time. So essentially, to speak about my process, um, I, I usually view my, my work or I've actually been told my work as a commentary on um, certain things within within space and time. Um, I essentially actually wanted to be a cartoon at the time. I think they have, they have the loudest voice in the sense of they can draw anything and get away with it. If they make a state on the... <laughs> The condition of a country or a political statement, they can do it, and millions of people will see that um, newspaper. And so that I think I that captured me in such a way where I wanted to draw or visualize um, things that um, essentially you don't need to add dialogue to it. So if you if you see the following following slide shows more or less um you know the, the the entire image of just that small portion of the person's facial expression but you don't actually know what the entire illustration is about un until you you maybe sit back and you actually you would ask the artist so i think i i think that it, um art, art can be presented in, in in so many forms and um I always say the best dialogue is the one that is unspoken, so more visual than anything else. And um, each picture and image represents a different, um, a different voice to to, to someone. Um, I like I, I can tell a lot. I this one person reached out once to me, and she told me that my work helps her, and she was actually going through cancer. Um, she was having chemo treatment, and I it didn't speak to me, and I didn't understand. And because once I'm done with the piece, um, the piece itself is, is so emotional, um, going through the piece and producing the piece and, and whatever message someone gets from it, essentially, I think it's, it's better to have a message than none at all. So I'm glad that I can actually, that my art is vocal without dialogue or actual wording on it. Oh, you can go to the next slide, please. So this is just a, a slight um, view into how I gather information and references. Um, as stated before, all my work comes from a, a store. I think everyone's work comes from a store. So if I, for instance, we take the character's example, um, maybe I've seen this guy on a, on a train or I've seen him at the bus stop. And there's just something that's visually appealing to me about him, um, especially his expression. And for me, it's mostly about the facial expression than the entire image. Um, so the completed illustration isn't, if, if it's completed, it's all good and well. But the focal point would be, what is the subject expression? How, how do the character look? How does the person look? Because it is a person, it's just a, a character of them. So, so I would I would gather um I believe in sketching. I, I don't I don't have an eye test I'm walking around. I believe in, in documenting with a pen and pencil and sketching it out and, and collecting. I would have uh, your online references, but um I, I just feel more in, in touch with gathering references from being in person or the actual reference instead of me just because anyone can just you know, you Google up an image, it comes up, you, you use it, but um, it, it, there's no feeling um, or emotion. Right. Next slide, please. So my work essentially plays on a lot of space, um, especially white space. I, I don't have, um, I vaguely 
you won't see a a background. You won't see a background. Um, I feel that it, it's it's better if 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 the person who's viewing this is looking at it. Um, if I want them to focus on, well, why is the dog looking that way, and why is um the uh, Philip looking? Why is he also looking that way? Um, I feel sometimes that uh, by having by having a, a busy artwork that you 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 don't actually know where to look at times. So if you strip down all, all of that and you take it away and you just have essentially what you want to be displayed, so what's important to you, um, and you you have that. And so I, uh, there was a, there was a time that I um I was actually struggling with trying to figure out if it, if it works better to have a complete emptied out space or if if having a, a, a environment if if it is that important to somebody to know that oh he's in a room oh no he's in a he's, he's close to it's a station or he's close to he's in the street or, or wherever he is um but if you look at this you know exactly he's in a room only because I I hung a frame there and you can see there's a railing. So you complete the picture without you needing that extra thing that's gonna pull the white space essentially might take away from where I want it to look. Now you can go to the next slide, please. So another another example with um, space and, and just having the white space actually work for you. Uh, you know that there's a, he's, he, he's sitting, but you also know that, okay, cool. There's probably mat, or if it's not mat, it's, it's probably, if I have a room, then might work. What type of flooring does it have? What is for what? So I um I play a lot on on you know having someone kind of get lost in the in the artwork itself and also asking questions as to where what is that? What does that mean? Why do you have a fridge there? Uh, why is the alarm clock fit to eight or what's going on with, with, with that? Um and once again by having white space you you are able to do that um and i think it's also as we looked at my my previous work um just trying to do i to design work in a way that it also still presents um a poster feeling to it and not just uh, his artwork done um yeah uh, next slide please um so as i mentioned before the characters they are all uh Either people that I know personally, uh, the family members though, <laughs> but um, either friends um, or someone I saw or someone that um, intrigued me. There was just something about the features that uh, was, was unique. Because everyone has as as a unique um, everyone has a unique uh, face face if I, if I can put it like that. Um, you know, you you, you get um, we say like life would be. So uninspiring if everyone had the same face, <laughs> and um, it, it it draws and and it plays on the fact of finding a a, a finding a, a interesting way to present this person where they if they looking at other oh cool how did you know that I um I do this or I, I move my mouth like this how did you know that stage four station and then it's just that particular moment that you like, oh, okay, interesting that this person's reaction or facial ex um, expressions are, are of such. Uh, next slide. And then, okay, moving into uh, the commentary side of, um, of my work. So I have this fascination with, um, if, if, I, if I stumble upon a, a whether it's a, a magazine cover, whether it is a Art piece that, that, that I've done. Um, I have this, this fascination of trying to kind of uh, reproduce it in a, in a way that I would, that I think looks appealing. Um, for instance, I was looking at this um, Kanye and um, Andre um, poster, and the fact that uh, Kanye is looking down, um, I thought to myself, uh, it would be interesting if, if I had him look up towards um, Andre. Um, how would that look like? And this Kanye has a lot of <laughs> uh, expressions that you can find on online. Um, but you know, if you, if you recreate it yourself, it's just so interesting point that you, that you present. And, and um, it is 
it's cool that the outcome um, that opposites work having him look in a certain direction and knowing that if you look at the region now, he's actually not looking at Ronda as a whole. Um, next slide. Um, here's another um, example of that. The Charles Campino. Um, well, one of the snippets of his leak video for This is America. And um, yeah, I don't think I have to. <laughs> I think this video by itself is political enough for me to even make any type of um statement or um to say, but it was uh, I actually like I don't know, I found I found this I found this part of um when he got into the question it was like really um interesting and um thought to myself though well, what how this would look if if I um capture him in this in this type of way but in a character. And presenting would it still would the message still be as serious as um the actual image or the or is a um what he's trying to um to play in his music and um as you can see um I, yeah I added I added text to give it a give it a sense of of um like if you were to put up a flyer somewhere and you would have both for me now and um I think. I was I was playing I was playing on 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 that on that notion. Um, yeah. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. Uh. So these two um pieces are slightly recent. Um. One on the left is very recent. Um. But both of them speaks from a part of um relationship and relationship within especially within the black community. Um. I. Yeah. The two characters on the my right is um it's Casey and he, he's pop. So it's a real people. <laughs> on the left um is it's two, two individuals I saw somewhere and um not in that same position of the standing. But these pieces are basically on the importance of of um relation relationships um within the black community. And especially a father and son um, relationship. What I liked about this because at the time when I asked um, Casey about um, to do it, he was like, "Yes, please. Um, um, you would would like a illustration." And I think what stood out for me is that he had this he had this images on his Instagram, and I was like, "Wow, this is really really lovely." And sad. and unfortunately, especially in within the black communities, it's not. That image is not portrayed a lot because usually our uh, dads leave, they never stick around. And it was just for me a very fascinating, um, humbling and, and, and loving moment that, you know, like there is, there, there are, you know, um, relationships that's just not shown. And um, I think, yeah, on its by itself, it, I don't have to say much because if you look at it, I'm sure, you know, you're going to ask what are the relations to the people. But in the the, the two art pieces. Next. So yeah, oh so personal personal narrative. Um that that is that happens to be me. <laughs> uh, I really do yeah, characters um myself, but unfortunately you can't I will run away from them. And um I think with, with this one, I was just thanking everyone um, for the tremendous support that I do receive throughout the year because if it, it's not for the audience or for the people that um, send me emails and send me my emails and, and so forth, I don't think I would be able to do what I am uh, I'm doing. And so with each um, artwork, even whether it's commission-based, whether it is uh, corporate, it has a, a small part of me that is um, a part of that. And um, uh, sometimes it's not that uh, easy to notice, but um, if if you I'm sure if you if you look at my entire body of work, you'll be able to see similar something. There'll be similarities within all of them that show you more or less um, kind of give you insight and in, not entirely, but give you a slight insight into me as a um, artist individual. Uh, next slide, please.
Okay, so um, and speaking about the exciting to me as the um, artist, my on on the left is a is a picture of my pop, and um, obviously on the right, everyone knows Malcolm X. So with with this being said, um, I drew a lot, or I in general, um, in the beginning of my of my career, I drew a lot from how I grew up, and I grew up in a very Military, I, I think, I'm guessing most um black kids during um that era, um their parents either went went to the saga war part of um black power movement, so I'm not pop with one of them, and um I do a lot from what he told me, especially his strong black male role, and what they presented within the household, and um with each drawing, and he as you can see at the Back in Malcolm X drawing, there's this, this uh, actor too there, um, which is also the play on the, if, if you do know Jermaine, the, um, the social death character. Um, Jermaine has a, I think the, I think the mascot is the soul, soul guy with the afro. <laughs> so there's, there's, there's small, there's slight things in, um, within the work that I will leave. And um, I think, like I said, you can, you can pick it up through, when you view the work, you'll, you'll be able to to see a lot of um of those uh yeah kind of kind of Easter eggs you know call them um yeah next time. and you can actually make quite um yeah as you can see in this as well as in the personal um portrait uh, I have yeah you can just uh, back is Malcolm X and you have Marvin Gaye as well that is at the um, at the, at, the, at the back of the, um, against the wall, basically. And that's, again, just playing on the notion of um, including things that you, you simply, as you, as you grow up and, and what your folks went through and you as a person, um, you know, finding your identity, finding where you belong within the community and, and things like that, as you was presenting that in, in your work. Um, and um, I think for me, I, I, Thought, okay, cool. Um, the best way I obviously know is through art and um, visually, and I think that that helped me a lot with with, with showcasing, um, you know, feelings or or just just basically saying what what you stand for and where you're coming from. Because I think it's a, I think it's important also to know um, where you're coming from and what you stand for in this world. Because otherwise, you stand for nothing for anything. Um, yeah, next slide, please. And nothing's wrong. <laughs> this is a, a illustration piece that I that I did exactly um old work of mine. Um, was part of the beginning and process. Um, gardens and seeds. They are in in LA. A really, really um nice studio. Nice guys with the way that that works. And um, I thought in the beginning I. A lot of support um, from them as well to you know was able to do these illustrations and send it to them. They will shout me out and they will uh they'll, they'll put it they put it up and um I you know I'm I'm happy that I got the opportunity to to express myself in in the way that I did um as you can see the, the first being raised and the Afro or or um all part of uh, my childhood and um it's funny I. I recall I went to my dad's box. He had like this, this huge box that he that he did, and uh, I because I, I never heard him uh, in the beginning of growing up. I never you know, trying to figure out what is this dude about, and I found this this Afro uh, pick. This was, it was first time. Like, oh, okay, and um, I went through his records and it was Motown, it was it was jazz, and it was it was you know all these these um, just funk records. I was like, oh, so he was like a soul brother. <laughs> and so I was just super interesting because I think our, our parents tried to hide who they were <laughs> when you get to an age where they're like, oh, mom, were you a hippie or dad, were you a whale? You part of weird things because you, you start to kind of do what they did. And so I showcased, uh, <laughs> showcased a lot of um, side things that I discovered in my, my childhood um, about my dad and Next slide, please.
Uh, okay, so um, this is a fairly recent um, poster. The original post is actually about 50. Um, I think it was an ad um, campaign that they were doing for, um, not for, I, think they were the, I know they were promoting samples at the time, and um, I'm very intrigued by these vintage um, posters um, that's hand drawn, and then they put it through a process, and, and you know, they so so um authentic to the production that I you know I don't know thought would would be would be dealt with I could comment on it. So um I decided because they did a they did a um they did some work with, with Nike at the time and I was like, oh cool. If how would it be if I had one of my characters interact with, with this poster and um they will see I originally I don't think that sneaker was there in the corner so that was added the character was added um, the extra character that is on the, on the bike, essentially that was what I added. So most of the things on the right thing by the side, you see that that's all mine. I think the, the, the top right section is off, off of the post as well. But um, I just, I don't know, there, there's something about ad, even advertising um, posters um, where not much is said, but you know exactly what they're trying to, <laughs> trying to, 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 to buy. Um, so I just, uh, I love, I love adding to the existing, um, say, yeah, existing story uh, next right. Um, yeah, so this is the illustration for, I think it was AMX, if I'm not mistaken. And, um, it's, uh, it's a part of a series called Room Edition. So um one of the main or one of my main inspirations behind it was um Spike Lee's ad in the nineties with Michael Jordan. He had um he had this I don't know if it was yeah, at the time he had um this uh, Jordan Jordan used to be like full the full the room and he stood in the middle and it was this black and white um images. Um and I was fascinated by I don't know if it is just the um Amount of things that are in that room. How do you? How would you even navigate? And I think you can you can tell a lot by person's space. I thought, oh, it would be cool right, if I have this character and kind of kind of place him in a in a in a nineties uh, era type of um, environment where his, his room presents that. You know, yet there's there's still some items of um, current current um, current year in here. But if you look further, you'll see like a mouse, as opposed to James Brown. And um, I think most of the things essentially is, is, is things that I also had at the time in my my own room. And at the back, you see uh, to the right uh, to the right thing on poster by Spike Lee. So it's essentially uh, most of the things within what he has um, in that space, but um, to play off uh, the nineties still. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, and there's the example of one of these posters, um, which was on the wall on the on the left, the Air Jordan Atlanta poster. Um, I think as as most people collected the sneakers back then, um, that was that was in your room. <laughs> that poster was in, definitely was in your room, and if you were a huge fan, you had one somewhere. Poster sitting in New, New York as well as Spike Lee poster. So um, it was just. I guess that era if you grew up in where um these things um seemed important to you as a as a kid, but you didn't really know what they stood for until later you were, oh they were kinda um molding me um to the type of person I was becoming. Uh, right. And yeah, yeah, you can see uh, another example of just that the Mouth Davis um Poster. Obviously, I was not alive in 1970, but um, it was just interesting for me, um, the way that the you know, the poster was was designed, and so that's the original one. I, I took it and I placed it on the wall. So I, oh, it would actually be cool if it was a bit um damaged. I mean, it's been hanging there for so long, and um, so as you can see in the illustration, it's like oh, this is with it. it that it went through, but you you kept it because it's a really cool poster. So you kept it on your <laughs> despite <laughs> but how it looked. Like, that they, they gave it out that during that time, it was like, you know, you weren't at Hollywood Bowl, but but the poster. 
So uh, yeah, as I said, it was just it's interesting because they don't say much, but they say a, a lot if you, if you you know if you look at it. Um, because you just need to take a minute, a few takes away where, where it's gonna happen, and you'll be there. So next slide, please. Okay, so um, as you could, uh, as you could tell, um, most of my work has uh, sneakers in them, or how to say brands, and um, it, it comes it comes in play with um, our relationship with um, consumerism and just uh, the consumption of whatever it may be, whether it's clothes, whether it is um, decor, whether it is uh, sneakers, um, jewelry, uh, it doesn't matter. Um, I usually have this thing where I would exaggerate the, the sneakers, and um, that's my slight comment on on um, on the brand itself. And uh, sometimes these brands will do these collabs with with uh, other corporate brands and so forth. And I'm like, oh, it will be um, it'll be interesting to see how this would look, um, but exaggerated a bit. And so I, I, I play, I play a lot. I play a lot on that without without uh, actual dialogue being there or me writing, "Hey, I am commenting on this right now." <laughs> um, I would just then em emphasis place emphasis on it within the the artwork itself. Uh, right. Uh, yeah, and here is uh, two examples um, of that. Let's see, I got post on your left. And then um, I think if I'm not mistaken, the post on your right was was from a um, a photo that was actually taken by a friend of mine. Um, he had this dude cross the street, and um, interesting because it was um, he was walking and we were walking and walking in this direction, and um, I thought it was actually interesting if I if I would change a few things. Um so I added the I added the, the sneakers and I was like gave me hat and gave me this Moses look like a beard and <laughs> bench coat and um you know just to <laughs> just to that kind of kind of show <laughs> something's happening but we're not really sure. Um but the, the Blenciaga um I think at the time they were they were in some trouble when in the trouble and um I thought to myself they will definitely not have um, the character I do. They will never ever have someone like that in in their in their um advertisement. Um, and I thought it would be interesting if I could make a comment on it, but with a an individual that they would not be display. And um, and you see uh, the brother over there in a in a bench coat with boots and um, does not represent I think for them what they would essentially align with their brand. Uh, so this is um obviously Malcolm X. Um it's the poster, the original poster um was the launch of the Tom Sachs, um the collab between Nike and himself. And I think he was also going through some allegations I think of things at the at the time. And I thought, oh so that could be interesting if I could take a um um, a well-known figure, um, like Malcolm X, and kind of um, play into into what Malcolm stands for, and um, obviously what Nike stands for on their own, and what Tom stands for on his own, and tied in as a um, poster for 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 the sneak itself. When you know that none of this will actually, uh, you won't, <laughs> they will they will never roll touch. <laughs> Such a um such a post <laughs> yeah everything opposes each other within that space but um, I thought it's an interesting way um to uh, present uh, the shoe that they were essentially um selling at the platform at least oh so uh, actually this is a poster for Mr Bailey um at the time he. He released his um he was working on this shoe and um uh he was kind of gave this special futuristic um feeling and um I think uh, I think the, yeah I think um he had this he had this design design up and I thought oh it would be interesting if I had 
uh, um, a character interacts with um with the with the sneakers and the sneakers um the shape of it is, is really cool um I like the shape and I thought oh, if, if you could blend uh, we can you can release a, a almost like a postcard type type of design and have it have it play off him having cereal which I know okay <laughs> But um, just because of the uniqueness of the shoe itself, um, it could just uh, it could be essentially a really cool um ad um for for the, the shoe. Uh, next slide, please. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, Stefan, thank you so much. This was such a fantastic presentation. It was. So so great to see um, the breadth and expanse of like your work. Um, I just want to open the floor for any questions that folks might have. You can go ahead and drop them in the Q&A box or the chat, and I'll go ahead and read them uh, to Stefan for you on your behalf. Um, I had a question um, that sort of you touched on a little bit uh, as you gave your presentation, but I'd love if you could expand a little bit on your own personal relationship with posters, uh, because they clearly play such like a big like part in your work. Um, and you talked a little bit about like drawing inspiration from them, but I'd love to hear sort of like your personal experience with them. Yeah, cool. Um, so uh, I I, th I think I was I was exposed to um, posters um, during my art school. Uh, when I went to art school, and um, I don't know, it was something about these um, vintage, um, as you as you saw my work, these vintage um, posters that I, I saw hanging up, and um, I, what I find found fascinating about it was that the they were able to um, project the the message needed without doing much, you know. Uh, so they would have, say, for instance. That is a um a call to rally or um or in fact no sign up for a class we just have a, a image of a say for instance a kid or um you know, a drawing of a kid and they'll put the date the date and the time and everything 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 was in unison <laughs> you look you looked at it was this this is interesting who actually um who decided that that typeface would work with that image and that image would make sense with that. And that you would you would view it and you would know okay cool oh wow or the, the image cap captivate you and you would go to go read okay what is they saying but you go and you will go so um I think I, during during um that time frame um uh, when being at art school that's what I I got exposed to a lot of um you know uh, they, they would usually give you the history of things so uh, with, especially with the history of design posters plays a huge role in it um. The communicating side of it, and how to convey a message with, with um, with you know, to to uh, convey a message in a way where there's actually action from the person or the viewer. And um, when I when I looked at that, uh, I don't know, it, it inspired me a lot because you can say it's an ad, but it's not an ad. But if you look at it, it's also it's a call to do something. So it's it, it can play. <laughs> it's so it's so fascinating. It can play on both ends of the spectrum. If you need something so you're gonna use a poster. But if you want to if you want to so uh get someone's a thing, you're gonna use a poster. But if you just want to do author, you can also. And so I, I don't know, I just found it really you, you can't box it. Um yeah. I don't know if it's answer your question. Absolutely. Thank you. We have time for a few more questions. Oh, this is a great one. Well, actually, I want to read this uh, compliment that came in the chat earlier, but um, your work have a fantastic poster and sticker quality about them, and it appeals to the child in me as my adult brain analyzes the messages in the overall image. Just thought that was a really nice comment. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm a child myself. <laughs> 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 Absolutely. Um, did you do you create works on paper and digitally, or do you primarily work with digital illustration? Or so um, all my work is um, for some paper, and then digitally they will be executed. But everything's on paper. I don't sketch uh, digitally. I feel like it takes away from um, the, it takes away from the creating um, the feeling just of of, of the. I don't know. I, I just feel like nothing beats 
pencil and a pad. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Because you, your work your work gets lost once it's um digital and um you know at least you have some control I feel once it's all in the aspect of you having that, that pencil and you're working through it and you're raising and you're working. Um, yeah. Okay, so always start on hard paper first before going into digital. That makes yes. sense. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that that was shown in some of the earlier sketches that you shared with us. Yes. So it looked fantastic. Um, were you always into streetwear fashion or is this something that came to you later in life or? No, I was actually also um, just also playing back on um, as how I grew up. My mom was a seamstress, actually. So I fell, I fell asleep uh, to the sounds of um, machine. We did, we did, we did, we did over lockers, uh, single zip, zip, zip. But she made, she made hats and she made dresses. And um, I would always go in, I would go play in that room. And funny material actually has a smell. That, that room smelled like material. <laughs> so I would, I would play in that room and, and I, would, I would love her uh, process because she, and when she makes the hats, uh, she'll show me how, and she'll have this mold of hat, and she'll put it out in the sun because it, uh, it will, obviously now it dries out, and you pop it, and then she'll cover it with the, the material. So there's a process to that. I would always watch her, and she'd work late nights and on the weekends, and um, she'll make so I'd have my my factories made, my my PJs made, <laughs> my clothes were actually my before it was even a thing, and I just I don't want to wear it because. I went to school, kids were like, they were in brand. I was like, oh man, my mom made it. <laughs> and at the time I was late, because then your mom made it. <laughs> but so I grew up in um with my mom actually um, having that effect on me beautifully again and making comments. Um yeah, well basically young as I could recall. Yeah, very cool. Have you ever considered working in fashion or streetwear or you're like, illustration is my lane? I did, but then I found out that <laughs> of the machine that I'm trying to <laughs> but I so completely skewed. I so sometimes my mom would leave and I'll see if I can put this pen together and it would come out completely. <laughs> so she has to save it and I'm like, no, 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 I think you should just... <laughs> <laughs> absolutely um this is a great question who would you say are you like your art or illustration influences so it's definitely um norman rockwell um and the reason for him is actually because of the the expression that um he expresses in the characters so i love that they are so expressive um i don't know whoever has seen his work uh, they, they, there's those elements to his um, his uh, characters that are they real, but they also still a character, and so I kind of like that. And then um, secondly, um, this well known illustrator that's actually from South Africa, uh, Zach Peters is his name. So he used to he used to I don't know I think he's still a cartoonist for a lot of well known papers over here in South Africa, and he his characters of the world team create create these these these. What is this? What is this? Yeah, how does this dude do this? And he will just be commenting on certain things. Like, you know, it's so cool. Um, I think so. Those are my that's my main influences. Um, and also the creator of the Tintin book, um, which is based the book so with uh, the, the characters that he created. It's um, really cool. Wonderful. Thank you. Are there any other questions that anyone has? Last chance before we close out. Um, oh, here's here's one. Uh, the the illustrations of the rooms that you shared us were like yes. really like evocative. Um, and I loved uh, how you were describing how you create the feeling of a room without actually like drawing a room. And I think that that was like super successful. Uh, but can you share a little bit more? Um, are there any sort of like shared themes or pieces that have like uh shared themes sort of like throughout them even if they're not necessarily like related or separate illustrations um in terms of um a series mm -hmm. oh so so the so the room edition is is basically something that um i continued um i don't know if you, if you saw in the beginning 
Um, it starts off as very um, simple in the sense of I had a few a few um, objects uh, on the ground and I had um, you know character and then later I was on that by just, you know having a poster up, having um, having a railing on me, having a desk there, having uh, the, the bed and, and just to I think I think I'm at that point where it, you can say it's a complete <laughs> it's a complete space. <laughs> In the beginning, I was I was figuring out okay, okay, how do you tie all of this together? But also create a feeling where it's not because you can you can Google a, a, a room and you can place it and, and I didn't don't want that. So I, I wanted it to you know when you look at it, you're like okay, cool. This is this is, this is I can see this is still done um first on and paint on and thought the it's not you know traced in any way to create that that authentic um feeling of um. What could I, if, if I look or if I lived in, in such a space, how would I respond to it? I think that that kind of, um, you know, I would be, um, um, I would kind of um, drive off that feeling um, for myself if I look at a space. So I think it would be the room edition of the series that both later on to what it is now. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, Stefan, thank you so much for sharing your work with us. This is such a fantastic presentation and it was so great to see your evocative illustration styles and I can't wait to see what you do next. <laughs> thank you very much. Sam. Absolutely. Thank uh, you all so much for joining us and I hope to welcome you all to Poster House soon. Um, and yeah, thank you again, uh, Stefan, for your time. Absolutely. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Everybody enjoy the rest of your day.